Out of all the animals that can be found in the US, snakes are probably the most hated. For some people, it's easy to hate snakes as they're potentially dangerous, but all animals play an important role in their ecosystems, and they should be loved all the same. Snakes play an important role in controlling rodent numbers, and the snakes of North America help to maintain biodiversity. There are around 100 species of snake that can be found in the US, and around a fifth of these are venomous. The US is also home to some invasive species of snake, with one of the most famous being the Burmese python. These invasive snakes can have a massive negative impact on the ecosystem, and can even have a negative impact on the native snakes. In this video I will be trying to determine which American snake is the most deadly, and this is quite a hard thing to do. There's quite a few ways in which you can judge how deadly a snake is, such as how large they are, how they kill their prey, and how potent their venom is. In this video I will be judging the snakes based on statistics, and how many fatalities they have caused since the 1950s. I think this is a very fair way to judge how deadly a snake is, as some snakes have a very toxic venom but rarely bite people, but other snakes may have a weaker venom but are far more aggressive. Some dangerous snakes come into contact with humans far more regularly than others, and strangely a large number of Americans are killed by their pet snakes. In the US, since the 1950s, people have been killed by Indian spitting cobras, black mambas, gaboon vipers, king cobras, boom slangs, and African puff adders. This just goes to show that you need to be very careful when keeping dangerous snakes, and one mistake when handling could mean that it's game over. But in this video I will be focusing on wild native snakes, as I will be going through three of the most deadly snakes in the USA. And for our first species we can head to the southeastern United States, as we will be taking a look at the Cottonmouth. Now this snake also goes by the name of Water Moccasin, and is very closely related to the Florida Cottonmouth. This snake is usually found in aquatic habitats such as streams, marshes, and swamps. This snake is a very impressive swimmer and will feed on a wide range of aquatic and semi-aquatic prey. This usually comes in the form of amphibians and fish, but it's also known to target small turtles and small alligators. This snake can reach a maximum length of around 1.8 meters, and at this size, this snake is quite formidable. Despite this, it is not safe from all predators, and in Florida, invasive Burmese pythons have been seen feeding on these snakes. This snake is often confused with the common water snake, which is a non-venomous species. You should still approach both of these snakes with care, but the cottonmouth is still the more dangerous of the two. If you approach a cottonmouth, it may respond by coiling its body up and displaying its fangs, and this is where you'll see its very pale mouth. The pale coloration of its mouth is how it got its name, and if you happen to see this snake with its mouth open, you may be in danger. In most cases, a snake doesn't want to bite a human, but instead does it out of self-defense. Venom is very valuable to a snake and takes a lot of energy to create. This means that a snake will not use its venom unless it feels like it has to, and if you choose to leave a snake alone, in most cases it will not try and bite you. But if you are bitten by this snake, it can prove fatal, because it does have quite toxic venom. This snake's venom is cytotoxic and destroys tissue. If a victim is not able to get medical attention, it can prove fatal, but in most cases it can be treated, although some bad bites can require amputation. Even though two to four people are bitten by this snake each year, these bites are often successfully treated. Since the 1950s, there have only been two cottonmouth-related fatalities, and this is extremely low for such a relatively common venomous snake. So even though the cottonmouth has the potential to kill, it rarely does, but it should be respected nonetheless. But for our next species, we can stay in the same area, as our next species is the Eastern Copperhead. Now this snake is a pit viper endemic to eastern North America, and is known for having quite impressive camouflage. It can blend in very well with rocky and forest environments, and this means that it can be easy to accidentally step on this snake and receive a nasty bite. This snake is known for having quite a few separate populations, and these populations can differ in size and coloration. At one point this snake was thought to have multiple subspecies, but today they are all classed as the eastern copperhead, apart from the broad-banded copperhead which is its own species. Copperheads are known for being semi-social, and this may seem like a strange way to describe a snake. Although they hunt alone, they usually hibernate in communal dens, and they often return to the same den each year. Copperheads can be found in a wide variety of habitats, from terrestrial to semi-aquatic. In some cases, they can be found in urban and suburban areas, and this is where most fatal bites occur. 
In the wild, they mostly feed on mice, small birds, and lizards, but are also very capable of feeding on other snakes. This species has a slightly smaller maximum length than the cottonmouth, maxing out at around 1.35 meters. Copperheads are generally not aggressive, and bites are rarely fatal. In most cases, bites occur when they are stepped on, or when people do not notice that they are there. In some cases, they will even give dry bites, which involve no venom whatsoever. Despite this, if you are injected with a healthy amount of venom, it can prove fatal, as they have a hemotoxic venom, which causes tissue damage, swelling, and necrosis. As I've covered, fatalities are rare, and since the 1950s, there have only been six reported copperhead fatalities. Their venom is thought to be slightly less toxic than the cotton mouth, but this just goes to show that the snake with the most potent venom isn't always the most deadly. Now I have slightly cheated for the last inclusion on this video, because I've decided to include a whole group of snakes. In the last part of this video I will be focusing on rattlesnakes as a whole, but there is a reason behind this. As I'm sure you can imagine, if you're bitten by a rattlesnake, your first thought isn't to identify it. In most cases, if people are bitten by a rattlesnake, they are unable to identify it, and this means that it's hard to identify which rattlesnake is the most deadly. For those of you who don't know, rattlesnakes are venomous vipers, and can be found all over the US. Some of the most famous species in America are the timber rattlesnake, the eastern diamondback, the western diamondback, and the mojave. Out of these species, the mojave has the most potent venom, and is also known for being one of the most aggressive rattlesnakes. Despite this, it is nowhere near the most deadly, mostly because it's found in desert environments with very few people. The eastern diamondback rattlesnake is the largest rattlesnake species in the US, but once again it is not the deadliest. That title goes to the timber rattlesnake, and this is mostly due down to where it's found. This species is endemic to eastern North America, and is often found in heavily populated areas. Because it has such a wide range, it has quite a few subspecies, and once again these subspecies vary in size and coloration. Like all rattlesnakes, it has a rattle at the end of its tail, and this rattle acts like a warning to would-be predators. You'd think that this rattle would make it easy to avoid this snake, but as the stats show, quite a lot of people are bitten by these snakes. These snakes can reach a maximum size of around 2 meters long, and in their native range they feed on typical prey for a snake, such as small mammals, birds, frogs, and even other snakes. To take these prey items down, it of course uses its venom, and this snake is known for having very long fangs, and also a very high venom yield. The toxicity of this snake's venom depends on where it's found, as in some states it's known for having a highly toxic venom, whereas in other states it's known for being very mild. If you're unlucky enough to be bitten by a very toxic timber rattlesnake, it could prove fatal, because since the 1950s there have been at least 14 timber rattlesnake related fatalities, and as most snakes involved in rattlesnake fatalities go unidentified, this number could be a lot larger. If you see this species in the wild, you really should watch it from a distance, and you should give it the respect that it deserves. If you know of any other snakes that you think I should have included in this video, then let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.